What's up, everyone? Welcome to the State of Philly Sports History for July 17th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Great, great Phillies game yesterday. Uh, after the three-hour rain delay, we did get down in time for the start of the game. And then when the game got delayed, we just kind of hung out. And I don't know if they do this like on off days or when they're away. Um, I know I've taken a tour and you were able to do it, but I highly recommend going. And if you can get Hall of Fame club seats or do the tour where you can see the Hall of Fame, sort of the museum area, it's pretty cool. They they have a lot of Phillies history stuff there, uh, but we were able to just kind of hang out there in the air conditioning and wait for uh, the game to actually start. Uh, But once the game started, what a game. Lots of fight in this team. I love how this team is always in it, and you can't give up on them uh, right until the very end. And it Wheeler was very strong, uh, went seven innings, and he made a few bad pitches, and the Padres took advantage of them. The umpire, especially in that Soto inning, were, uh, he was shaky at best. And where our seats were, we were behind home plate, so we had a good vantage point of – where the balls and strikes were and a few of that like he just it seemed like he was missing them with a lot of pitches uh, i don't know how that came across on tv but it just seemed like he was off and it it cost him they should have won it in regulation but they they did manage to win it in 12 seven to six what a game again like i love the fight in this team it seems like they have a lot of fun with each other and it just seems different than last year's team and i don't know if because it's in they're all, more, for the most part, a year, another year together um, or what. But it, it definitely was, it's a, it's a fun team to watch. I was also surprised at how many Padre fans there were. And I don't know uh, if, like, they're hardcore Padre fans um, or there was a, a large contingent of uh I guess people from the Dominican uh, who ha- were waving the flags and the place went nuts when Tatis came into the game to pinch hit. And then especially when he, he knocked in the run. Um, but like, I mean, it was a very, for having a three hour rain delay, it was a very, very energetic crowd and, and it was a lot of fun. And when that place is rocking, it's, it's hands down, I think the best atmosphere of all the Philly sports teams. Um, when it's, when the Phillies are good and that place gets going, like it's it's a ton of fun. So good win for the Phillies. Uh, they're off today. Brewers come into town for this week, which is a good measuring stick for them too. Uh, Brewers are a decent team, so I'm anxious to see if they can. Let's just keep winning that series and start tracking down the Marlins. We're, we're close, and like I said, we got them in our sights. Good day for them to win as the Braves and Marlins both lost. So we're going. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. If you want more Phillies coverage, be sure to check out our friends over at 2008 Phils. They have the biggest Phillies email newsletter in the world. Must read. I'm anxious to see what they make of this weekend series because they took two games of the doubleheader, had the exciting, thrilling game yesterday, uh, minus the the game they just decided to take off on Friday. Uh, but I'm anxious to read what they have. For a limited time, right now, they're offering this day in Philly sports history listeners 75% off their subscription. You heard that right, 75%. Follow the link in the, the description wherever you're getting this, whether it's YouTube, uh, the podcast, wherever. Follow the link. It takes you right to the page. You sign up. The subscription gives you access to all of their posts, all of the conversations, all of the archives. And they do a good job of mixing in uh stuff about the current team and analysis of that as well with historical stuff so obviously if you're listening to this you 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 like the philly sports history aspect of it they have a good section on that so you have access to everything you get that 2008 championship banner t-shirt 2008 phils will follow your twitter account if that's what you want plus they have all kinds of giveaways whether it's autographs tickets memorabilia you name it uh but you you can only get access to that if you're a subscriber and it's only two dollars a month and i mean that's nothing or just pay for the whole year for 20 bucks and i I keep saying it and i'm gonna say it because it's worth it to me just for the t-shirt and then on top of that you get all the content sign up 75 percent off follow the link it's 2008 fills with a z you won't be disappointed again it's a it's a must read and you get an awesome t-shirt out of it so go check them out 
All right, time for As the Harden Turns, and today there really is no update other than Harden's still here. Uh, doesn't seem like he's going anywhere anytime soon, uh, but because nothing really is moving, everybody now is coming out with his, an opinion on the situation. Jay Williams the other day said something. Uh, Barkley was at it, and which I love. Barkley will say anything about whoever. Uh, but it's just one of those things, and I have a feeling this is going to drag on. And nothing I don't think is going to happen until Damian Lillard gets traded, but this might go into the season. So hopefully it does not become a distraction. Obviously it probably will. But we have that contract, and Tobias is coming off the books at the end of the season. So maybe you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know, but... Really, there's just no as the hard turn update. Quick Eagles update, and I think this is one of those stories where there's smoke, there there's fire. Uh, Deshaun Jackson put out a cryptic tweet about some, doing something for 15 years his way, and people thought that that was his way of retiring. He quickly came back out and said, "No, you're going to know when I retire. I'm not retiring yet." But I think he's kind of putting it out there that he wants to play. And on the one post, there was a picture of an eagle. So I don't know if he's trying to come back for one last run with the Eagles uh, for the third time or what. But, I, I, again, I think this is one of those things where there's smoke, there's fire. We'll see. I always liked Deshaun. Um, and we know he got unceremoniously traded uh, by – or, no, he didn't get traded. He got cut. Uh, LaShawn got traded by Chip Kelly. We want more on the Chip Kelly area. Go check the archives of Back to the Future. There's a good episode on his whole tenure. But here's who won't cut you and disappoint you. PhillyGoat.com. Down there at the game yesterday, I was amazed at how many people had Philly Goat stuff. I recognized shirts, hats, all kinds of stuff. It was cool. And they had the authentic goat. So PhillyGoat.com. Get some Eagle stuff preparing for the season. Um, if you really like James Harden before he gets traded, they have some Harden and Embiid stuff on there. Uh, but... Just a very good website for all your Philly sports apparel needs. That's phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. I know the people that I saw down there, hopefully they use that promo code for 10% off. But even some of the hats, and I noticed a couple of the hats. The hats actually looked really good now that I saw them in person. Probably going to end up picking up a hat or two. So go to phillygoat.com. Check out their selection of hats if, you, if you're not a t-shirt person or buy a t-shirt and a hat matching whatever you got to do use the promo code jim montgomery for 10 percent off of that order okay we are going to go back in the way back machine today and on this day back in 1918 in honor of the phillies 12 inning win last night the cubs beat the phillies two to one the cubs won it in the bottom of the 21st inning so Yesterday's game was not 21 innings, but it was 12. So in honor of that extra innings, we're, that's where we're going back. The bottom of the 21st, it's the longest game in Philly's history innings-wise. Not necessarily time, but it's the most innings they've ever played. And crazy about this, both starting pitchers went the distance. Milt Watson for the Phils and Lefty Tyler for the Cubs. So imagine going out to see a game it goes 21 innings which is two almost two and a third games um that you're seeing and the the starting pitchers were the same um lefty tyler finally got pinched hit for in the bottom of the 21st which helped the uh the cubs to win it but the longest game innings wise in philly's history occurred on this day back in 1918 a little bit of a bonus this day in Philly sports history for you. The longest game in Philadelphia pro baseball history is 24 innings. The A's did that twice against the Red Sox in 1906 and then in 1945 against the Tigers in a game that ended in a tie. So the longest Philly pro baseball game was 24 innings. But on this day, the Phillies played their longest game back in 1918 against the Cubs. Losing 2-1. to one. Imagine going to a 21-inning game and only two runs being scored. Yikes. All right. Time for the Philly Sports Most Lovable Loser Tournament update. We're done with the first round now. <clears throat> the 80-81 Sixers beat the 76-77 Sixers yesterday. And that's very hard to say. Uh, but 
getting 60% of the vote. Uh, and they will be moving on to the second round, which starts today. I'm very excited now for, for the second round to start. Uh, start with the Eagles regional. And today's second round matchup is the number 8, 1988 Eagles versus the number 15, 2002 Eagles. The 88 Eagles beat the 2004 championship Eagles in the first round 55 with 55% of the vote. You remember that was the team, Buddy Ryan's team that won the division, uh, got hot late. Uh, really, that defense was coming into its own. Randall was just coming into his own, making plays. And they took on the Bears, which like the storyline was perfect. It was Buddy Ryan's old team versus his new team, like to the point where Buddy Ryan had the buses kind of circle around Soldier Field, announcing that the Eagles were there in typical Buddy Ryan fashion. Unfortunately, late in the second quarter, a fog started to roll in, and by the entire second half, you could barely see what was happening. Uh, and the Eagles ended up losing the fog bowl despite putting up ridiculous numbers on offense just not being able to score. They made a lot of mistakes early in that game, which cost them. But <clears throat> on a disappointment level, very, very, for me, this is the first year I followed every single Eagles game. And to have that season end like that on New Year's Eve, as excited as I was to watch the replay with my dad. Uh, but I have, I do have a digital copy of the Fog Bowl, the original version. So anybody wants to, to have a copy of that, let me know. We can work out a deal, uh, and, and I can get that to you. Uh, they will be taking on the number five seed, the 2002 Eagles, which is equally disappointing but in a different way. Uh, they dominated last week, the 1947 Eagles. 100% uh, of the votes came on the 2002 that was the second year that they made it to the NFC Championship game, but they had the number one seed. They kind of rolled through the playoffs. It was the McNabb uh, with the sprain or a broken leg through the four touchdowns. AJ Philly and Coy Detmer guided the ship into the playoffs. They beat the Falcons and then setting up that that game, which the Eagles had Tampa Bay's number, especially in the playoffs going into that game, and then Tampa Bay just came out and punched the Eagles in the face. After the Eagles came down and took the early lead, like that place was rocking. The vet almost didn't make it to Philly season because of how, it, I mean, the place was literally shaking. Um, but it was not meant to be. Uh, poor decisions, poor uh, <clears throat> personnel decisions that were made earlier in the season ended up costing that game. And of all of Andy Reid's team, I still think either this one, this one probably had the best shot to win the Super Bowl. Uh, the 03 team, the 01 team, uh, I don't know. They could have maybe pulled it off, but they were still young. The 08 team, I don't know if they would have pulled off the game against the Steelers. They were a very underrated team, but this 2002 team, from a disappointment level, I, I never heard a loss, especially that big of a game, people just silent walking out of there. Like Usually people are cursing, pissed off, hitting, slamming things. We walked out of that stadium in dead silence. Everybody was concerned that, that people were going to be breaking parts of the vet and taking No, we were just stunned because we really thought we were going to the Super Bowl. Played this out on What If Sports, as I always do. The 2002 team dominated them, winning 80% of the time. <clears throat> Defensive struggle, though. Both defenses really showed up in this series. All of the games, with the exception of three, both teams scored under 20 points, and of those seven games, they were all decided by a touchdown or left. So it was a very evenly matched up. And then the three, th uh, the three other games were blowouts by the 2002 team. So now it's your turn. Who makes it to the Eagles regional final? The 1988 Eagles or the 2002? Be sure to get your vote into me. Leave a comment wherever you're watching this. If you're on Spotify. The poll was set up right there. Uh, Twitter, Jimbo underscore Mont. Uh, TikTok, Jimbo underscore Mont. Hit me up on Instagram, at Philly Jimbo. On my Facebook, Smoke Signals. Whatever you got to do, get that vote to me. Put your vote. And this is a tough, tough matchup to pick. I, I don't even know which way I would go yet. I'd probably lean the 0-2 Eagles. But I can, very, I can make a very strong case for the 88. But tell me what you think. And we will update this tomorrow. On this day, back in 1918, the Cubs beat the Phillies in 21 innings. It is the Phillies' longest 
game ever innings wise. They have a well-deserved day off after playing four games against the Padres this weekend, winning four of them. It's a Monday. Ugh, I hate Mondays, and it's dreary, but go make the best of it. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.